on this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast. It's the day after Halloween. Samhain for all you pagans out there. Kent had some activities. What's up, man? I bet Amos had a lot of activities with his new puppy. Uh, He's currently warming my feet like a good dog. And I've spent a lot of time with him under my feet as I learn more about audition. And we're going to talk about poop ropes. Ew. Also, we have Fitz on the episode tonight. What's up, yeah? Oh. oh my gosh. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 192 for Thursday, the 1st of November, 2018. Sowing, everyone. And that is how we're going to start the show, the show that is all about two lifelong friends celebrating all things geek with their guest. And of course, that guest is Fitz. I'm just, man, I, I, like, I don't even have, I don't know, what, Kit, why aren't you saying anything? Because I need to shut up. <laughs> Oh my god, so that's Amos, I'm Kent, and our guest tonight is the one and only Fitz. Uh, dude, holy crap. So so the intro to today's show pretty much sums up our week, I think. It's been just stupid crazy and messed up. Uh, before we get into all that, though, Fitz, how you doing, brother? Welcome back to the show. He's trying um, to hold it together is what he's doing. <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, the baby's home. Uh, Halloween's over with, so I don't have to walk around anymore. Um, and go outside that's a big thing. Uh, yeah. but I'm doing great. How about you? Um, really good and busy, but I, I gotta, I gotta ask this for, for folks that, uh, that aren't necessarily aware you, you became a new father for the third time, right? And, and how, yeah. how old is the baby today? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. I, uh, see, I I have to ask because I mean clearly sometimes these things are just muddled in society and you really just you, nobody wants to ask. But that's what I do on the show. I ask the questions no one else wants to ask. Um, so you just recently had a baby three weeks ago. Does the does does the mother know? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, she was there. I oh. think it, <laughs> she felt the most pain of it. I guess. Uh, uh. It was that you know the whole the whole experience is surreal. You know it is, you know I, after ten years of not having children, or, or like I have children, but they're grown. I don't have to worry about you know. I mean, they pretty much like they'll keep their cells alive mm. at this point. You know, the, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to wipe their ass most of the time. No, no. Uh, but the new baby is like, oh my god, it, you know, it's it's just another bit of anxiety to have. You know. Yeah. Um, I, 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 so, and here's the, here's my, I'm, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, because that's what I do on the show. Apparently I just repeat myself years later. When you have a baby for all of you, all of you out there that don't have children. Um, if you are a mother for the first, I don't know, like 43 or 44 years of, of your, of the baby's life. Your job is to take care of the baby. That's that's what you do, and then <laughs> usually you pass on. It's Forty-three or forty-four years. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's it's not exact. You, you got to kind of like round out. That's like an average, you know. Um, okay. <laughs> but as as a dad, as a dad, your roles change very dramatically at about the six month mark and at about the three year mark. So for the first six months of a baby's life, you don't matter. As a dad, you don't matter. You 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 don't exist. You don't matter. There's there's you have no point in being there for the baby. You're basically subservient to the mother. And that's yes, and that's fine. Yes, that, that's, that's what a, I was gonna say. You're supporting. Yeah. You're supporting. Uh, supporting crew basically for. Mom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. There, there's no you 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 can't. The baby's not gonna interact with you. You might be able to help like lay <laughs> lay the, lay the baby I mean, to down. To varying degrees. To varying degrees. R right. But I mean, the baby doesn't like you're. It, at no point in the first six months of the baby, like, ah, no, I want to go over and suck on dad's boob. Like th that just, that, <laughs> that, that yeah, doesn't mom happen. Is, mom is primary. Yeah, yeah. Mom is, mom is the world. Mom is existence. And, and it, oh, and it, yes. Yeah, I get this blob over here. That, yeah. That I at, at about dad. six months, at about six months, the baby starts recognizing that you're dad. Like, oh, hey, there's another person. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Oh, the one that makes the goofy faces. And, yeah. And, yeah. And right. Is, yeah. 
it was tolerable to be around. Oh, that yeah. one, I guess I'm. Yeah, at, at, at about six months, you start mattering to the baby, and then at yeah. about three years, you have to flip from this. Uh, it, it, you, you go. You go from, from making faces to to teaching them how to make faces and 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 right. entertain you. Right, exactly. It, it's just another flip. It's it's and it's hard to explain exactly because it's just. Like for this first six months, you don't matter. For the next two and a half years or so, you're pretty cool. And and and, and then they start getting into this. Hey, I want to learn everything. I got ten million questions to ask, and and that you start fulfilling that role. But and luckily, you're only in that role for about forty, forty one years. <laughs> um, uh, again, I, again, your experience may vary. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just rounding out. This is just generalizations here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so I want. All right, I, quick question for Fitz, and then I want to go around the room. Um, Fitz, uh, did the baby dress up for Halloween? No, actually, uh, I, I think that's one thing. Just like being, uh, they call us second time parents because you know it's been, you know, a while since we had a kid. But like, like this time, you know, when you first have a child, you're like, oh man, he's only seven months old. We definitely need to dress him up and take him around and get candy. You know, right. you eat yeah. the candy yourself, of course, but right, uh, of course, but, but you use the child as as like bride. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, yeah, and I mean that's why I had kids was so I could eat Halloween candy again. Let's be uh, honest. Right. That's, that's, yeah, of course. I mean that's I think that's the you know primary reason that anyone has children. Right, because uh, because you can't buy it yourself, especially once you have kids, right. you can't afford the shit. Yeah, like, you, so, you so need the, the seven dollars and fifty cents worth of candy that you get. More than makes up for the thousands of dollars that you've just been raising this child. Yeah, I mean, no, so no. it's an aggregate though. You got to keep going for like the next eighteen years for the kid. Like, and that's where most of us screw up. We stop going for the kid at about three and start letting them do their own at like four or five. You know, and then we yeah. lose we we lose our interest in the candy. Not that we're not interested in it, but we don't have like a substantial investment in the candy at that point. It becomes the the kid's candy, and now it's like ah. How did I let this slip out of my oh, hands? Well, I mean, you've got you got parent tax, right? Like, I mean, everyone, oh, yeah. everyone, is yeah. a parent tax. Well, right? Kent, Kent, what is your parent tax? Uh, well, it's been, oh my god, it's been a while since so, any kids have trick or treated. But I would take, I, I would basically take. Uh, so, all right, so you got different hierarchy of candy, of candy, right? Of, like you've got of, of candies. Uh, Those that's like John Candy <laughs> and Robert Kennedy. No. Uh, what? <laughs> no. So <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna indulge that one. I'm not even gonna go down that road. No, but you got different layers of candy, right? Like you've got the bullshit. Like you've got, you know, anything that's bubble gum right off the bat. Fuck you. Um, anything that's not actually candy, like fruit or pencils or whatever. Fuck right. you automatically. Right. Yeah. All right. So you got yeah. the bottom layer of of just bullshit, right? And then you've got the second layer, which is like kind of like you know black licorice. Uh, candy corns, like you're you're kind of like bottom of the of, of Can, the stack, Candy right? corns are like, like candy corns are like decorated pencils that are really short and flavored. Let me Nobody... just stand up for candy corn right here and right fucking now. Candy corn is great. Okay. <laughs> All right, obviously subjective, but this is my this is my ranking. <laughs> so <laughs> next, then, then you've got like your Smarties and your Laffy Taffy and stuff like that, right? Like good candies, but you know, um, nothing to get super excited about. But then you've got like your Snickers in your Reese's cups, mm. right? Like that's top tier. So my, my candy tax or my dad tax would typically be like, I'm going to take, well, and, and this changed as they got older. Right. But like, especially when they were young, I was taking all your, your tier one candy, mm. like up until you're like three, I'm taking all your tier one <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> He's, he's, he's got a one-year-old running around with a pocket full of candy corn <laughs> and some goddamn Smarties. <laughs> no, I just picture Kent with his own fucking tub, and he's, like, taking out the kid's tub and all the good shit and putting it in his own. <laughs> but when, So when they got older enough to recognize Dad's bullshit, right? So I would tax, like, you know, maybe maybe a couple of candy bars. Maybe like I don't know three or four like Smarties and a Laffy Taffy, and then that that would be my tax. But like, and then of course you know as they got older and older, you know less trick or treating, and maybe I'd they, hey give me that Snickers, bro. <laughs> and then that was it. You know, and, and, and yeah, he's so, like he's like Dad, I'm 23 and I bought this shit at the <laughs> liquor store. 
<laughs> and you're like, yes, give me your Snickers, you little shit. <laughs> and he just has flashbacks of Halloween. <laughs> uh, all right, so so my I'm gonna go the other way with my hierarchy. Um, first of all, my any Tootsie Roll, any standard Tootsie Roll, like you know the the normal chocolate Tootsie Roll. Any of those that are acquired go to my wife. Like that's her thing. You don't. I haven't tasted a fucking chocolate Tootsie Roll in ten years. Like it, they don't <laughs> oh, exist. Oh, that's they, I. Sorry to that, hear that. That's that's hers. That's what she eats. That's the only candy she'll take, other than the occasional Snicker, little spicy Snicker. Yeah, but you haven't you haven't tasted the Tootsie Roll in. Uh... Anyway, sorry. Derailed. I derailed the conversation. Right. I I like, like, you don't, don't have chat. to be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. I, I just so, want to make that awkward you, pause <laughs> last long enough for Ken to be like, "Oh wait, I gotta say something here." Um, I gotta, yeah, I gotta, I gotta fill in the dead air. Let me yeah. say something. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He doesn't want to go on the tangents that I pull up, but he starts talking about chocolate tootsie rolls and shit. And also, anyway, um, mine <laughs> is so. There's candies that I won't buy. Like I'll buy a Butterfinger. Like if I'm crank, you know, hanging in for a Butterfinger, I'll just go buy one or or Snicker bar, or whatever else. I'm just gonna fucking buy the thing. Mm-hmm. My top tier shit that I'm taking from from the basket, my tax is gonna be the candies that I will never buy for myself, but I love. Okay. For instance, Nerds. I will oh. never buy Nerds, but I will steal every fucking Nerd right? you got in your bucket. Oh, I concur with that statement. <laughs> yeah, if there was Nerds in my kids candy bucket that's uh they used to have nerds yeah exactly <laughs> that's gone um and then the only other ones would, would be like the little bite-sized uh, butterfingers and snickers and uh, usually that's only like i'll grab one or two but that's not but nerds nerds are my thing like i yeah, won't, I won't buy them like it just seems shitty to buy them but <laughs> i'll eat the hell out of the <laughs> free ones Fitz, <laughs> what's your what's your dad tax uh i mean i, I like snickers and milky way uh uh, anything chocolate, really. So I, and I couldn't go ten years without a Tootsie Roll. But it, I don't ever, I can't ever think of a point in my life where I actually went out and bought a Tootsie Roll yeah. that wasn't like in a fun pack or you know right. something for Halloween. Yeah, yeah it's it, it's it's always the ones for me. It's it's the ones that I'm never gonna. Uh, and and Fitz, you were standing up for candy corns earlier. I'm gonna stand up for those little black and uh, orange peanut taffy whatever whatever the hell's they are. The little super cheap crap candies oh yeah yeah i yeah. love those damn things i don't even know where you buy them like i've never seen them on the shelf but i know they so end up what, in buckets and and then i take them so and i eat what's, them so what are the little like like caramels or caramels depending on what part of the country you're from that have like the like the um uh, i don't even know it's like the creamy center right it's like a it's like a it's like a caramel candy Chewy caramel candy with like a creamy center. Do you know what those are called? I don't even know what those are called. But mm-hmm. I, so when I was handing out candy the other night or last night, I guess, and I stole every single one that I saw. Like none of the none of the trick or treaters got them. I ate <laughs> them as I saw them. I, I I thought you were saying like you saw them in the kid's bucket. And you threw a Snicker bar in there and grabbed the fucking caramels. <laughs> trick, trick and treat, bitch. What's up? <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, so and, Halloween and, and, happened, and, and that's another thing. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna put my foot down. If you're trick or treating, okay, it's called trick or treating. If you're handing out candy and you never take the opportunity to steal some candy from one of those kids. You know one of them badass kids came knocking on your door with a bunch of attitude saying, give me some candy, and you didn't take something valuable out of their basket, then you are not playing the game right. Like, you need to relearn the rules. This is why I'm not allowed to hand out candy, because we end up with all new candy by the time the night's over. <laughs> because I I will I'll throw some cheap piece of shit candy in there, something like like a single Werther's, right? Just take a Werther's and just toss it in there, and I'll my hand will come out with like four Laffy Taffies. That's clearly a trade in my favor. <laughs> yes, Werther's Grandpa's candy. Yeah, yeah, I mean I'll eat the hell out of some Werther's, but I'd yeah. rather have some Laffy Taffy. Let's just let's just keep it real. I like the jokes. <laughs> Amos has his porch light on to give out candy, and the parents are like pushing them by the, the house and everything. Yeah, they know. They know. 
Uh, hey, uh, uh, so big voice Jay in the in the Twitch chat at uh, twitch.tv slash ritual misery every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central. Um, big voice Jay asks, have you or your wives made popcorn balls? Uh, no, I, mean, me, I have. Me personally, but... I've never made them. I think my mom used to make them back in the day, but I have not seen a popcorn ball in probably in multiple decades. Um, my sister-in-law, I think, brought, or maybe it was my wife, one of the two brought some home last Halloween from work. And I don't know what happened to them. I didn't eat any, any of them, but I know they slowly disappeared. So, so uh, Fitz, in central Georgia, popcorn balls, is that a thing? I'm sure it is, but I, I didn't really know about it until a bunch of my northerner friends came down and made it. And it's it's cool to make, and they taste good. I'm just not like crazy about it. And some people are legit crazy about it. I think I legit hit a girl in the head with a popcorn ball one time just because she wouldn't stop going on about how great they were. And I didn't mean to hit her in the head. It just she didn't catch very well. So <laughs> This is why I love having Fitz on as a guest. This, this, this is brilliant. Oh, my God. <laughs> like she didn't catch it, but it caught her upside the head. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So, so Halloween, so Halloween happened. We we did some candy stuff. We talked a lot about. What, what did you go as this Halloween. year? What was your costume? I so I was the eleventh Doctor from Doctor Who. The the Matt Smith portrayed Doctor character from Doctor Who. Okay. What about? Well, what about you, Fitz? What what were you for Halloween this year? Uh, asshole in a vest. Oh, that... so you haven't changed since you're still in no, costume no. right now. Got it. Okay. I'm still, yeah, this is me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Asshole um, on a vest. Got it. I, okay. I, went, I, I, went as, I went as a dad. Yeah, no, I did that too. No, no, I didn't just like, hey, I'm a dad. Ha, ha, ha. I, I went and I had a little school sticker that said visitor, and I wrote dad on it and had it stuck to my shirt the entire day. So you made, so you made a little effort. Uh, I mean, minimal still, but at least some. I mean, it was actually less effort than required because I had lunch with Autumn that day, so I should have put my full name down instead of just put three letters. So I actually like skimped out on my extra, <laughs> extra All right, credit. So it was slightly more than zero. Yeah, Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, 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 at the school, they were asking, like, so uh, are you dressing up this year? I'm already dressed up. I'm here as a dad. They're like, oh, is that not what you normally are every year? I was like, no, I've been an absentee father for the last 15 years. That Jesus didn't work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, on display. <laughs> like my, so my first Halloween as a father, we dressed up baby Lucas as a pumpkin, and I went as a pumpkin farmer. Oh. It's just uh, as lame. Yeah. It had, a, it had a clever name, but I did not dress any differently than I did at any other point ever. <laughs> I really hate the military guys to go, I'm going as a soldier. No. Yeah. No. Mm. No, no. no, you just barely got here from work. That's what that's what happened there. All right, Amos. The reason I showed up tonight for this show and uh -huh. was excited for you to be on, the uh -huh. only reason that I was excited for you to be on is so that you could tell us the pup date. Oh, the pup date. Did you just come up with that, or is that like something that's been floating around your brain for a while? No, that is no, that's a night attack thing. I know you're like seven hundred episodes behind. Seven hundred and forty two. Like, I don't, this totally, uh, it's totally right, um, fucking stolen. From so the the pup is actually uh, uh, we went I went down to Texas. We got the puppy. He was bigger, way bigger than we expected. And uh, to clarify for Night Attack fans, we're talking about an actual canine creature. Yeah, yeah. I did. Pup. I didn't just go buy seven and a half ac acres somewhere and bring it back to fucking Alaska with me. <laughs> all right. So they now they right. let me check that shit in. All right. Um, if you could do that, though, like, why are you streaming right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we picked up the puppy. We brought it home. It couldn't stay in the cabin with us. Had to go as checked baggage because it was so big. Mm. Um, uh, we have named him Kai, as in K-A-I, like uh, ocean in Hawaiian. Like, or, or like as in Kai Rizdal. Well, that's just an unfortunate coincidence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And we, we went through a, a series of voting. I, I removed myself from the situation because I didn't want to, you know, uh, uh, didn't want to, like, tamper with it at all because that's what I would normally do. So instead, I, I 
told everybody and had them all like uh, anyway we, we get down to the name kai and we've had four total accidents two of them were right before the show other than that he's been peeing and pooping outside pretty consistently he's awesome he's 22 pounds at eight and a half weeks so he's going to be a large puppy mm-hmm. um and training's not going as well as i'd hoped because Mostly there's too many distractions in this house, so I have to go like out to the garage to do any training. But the garage isn't clean, so he goes out there and he's just distracted by all the shit out there. <clears throat> but Well, uh, and also you're in Alaska, so it's like n- minus 57 degrees outside. No, we hit a high of 19 today. Uh, with Oh, Jesus. wow. And we still have like seven inches of snow on the ground. So, so you would lose him. In the snow. Actually, I took him out like Tuesday. I took him out to the front yard. We went up walking up and down the street. He's got like little blue booties so his feet don't get too cold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not even making this shit up. It's real. And my dog, if I had booties for my dog, it'd be so they didn't burn their feet on the right, sidewalk. Right, exactly. Uh, he he likes burrowing in the fucking snow. Oh, what kind of dog did you get? It's a German Shepherd. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, do you have any qualms up. about like uh, the stereotypes about German Shepherds, about them being mean or anything? Was that a problem? Because I have a pit bull, and everybody yeah. goes, oh, you got a pit bull? Oh, my God, they're fucking vicious, and they're really not. Like mm-hmm. uh, with the baby, the pit bull freaks out more than we do when he cries. He's like, hey, he's, he's yep. crying. Yep. You know? My uh, experience, pit bulls are probably the sweetest breed of dog that has ever existed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just don't like their crunchy faces. I just don't like how assertive they are. They they decide like if if, if uh, puppy decides, you know what? I'm gonna go to the other side of the room. Yeah, good luck stopping that dog from going to the other side of the room because yeah, he's just gonna do it. Oh, silly human! You put a wall here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's um he, he's 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 really not too much of a biter. He likes to chew rocks though, which pisses me right the hell off. Um, but, uh, for the most part, he's, he's been, he's been excellent. He handled the flight. Well, he's, like I said, he's eight weeks old. He handled a seven and a half hour flying time between the two flights and the two hour layover in between without soiling the, um, the kennel that we had him in. So now as soon as we got to the airport, uh, I took him straight outside and he peed like all day, but yeah, he's practically housebroken. He needs to get things figured out a little bit better. Maybe verbalize a little more so he doesn't pee on the carpet on the way to the back door. But uh, again, we've had him for almost a week. He's had four accidents, and two of those were today. So, so I have a I have a very specific question about Kai, and then I'm going to move directly into um, uh, something that I threw in the notes. Does does Kai chew on things that he's not supposed to? Like, does he like, well, chew or eat? things that he is not supposed to he's not too much into that yet but he's still like all of his toys are still new you know we got a big kong rope and a, a few other things he likes to chew on he did he did uh yeah, as amos leaves the microphone and has the uh, trailing so of... so this orange and yellow thing here was a rope with a fox head on it and as you can tell it no longer has a fox head yeah <laughs> he it looks like a, shit right looks like, a like a caterpillar with a with a, a a turkey's head it it looks like a a thanksgiving cat of nine tails is what it looks like <laughs> yeah it kind of does, really does. <laughs> come and see your adult store in here. <laughs> right 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 yeah no that's 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 legit um and, and we've noticed some peculiarities with him too he has to have a pillow when he lays down whether he uses his paw or uses like just now he was using that or he'll use my foot. He has to have something to put his head on. Like he's, he's, he's oh, kind of posh. Yeah. You uh, know? Right. Um, That's so sweet. Do you like puppy breath? I like puppy breath. I like the smell of it, even though it stinks. I just, I, it's a weird smell. You know? Well, I mean, it, it doesn't bother me like at all. At all. It's, uh, but I, yeah, do, I did watch like him lick his. Puppy. It just smells like ass. Where, where <laughs> I, you know, I, eight I, week old puppy is. Yeah. I, I did watch him uh, lick a shit sickle earlier tonight in the yard before I cleaned up with the pooper scooper. <laughs> so he's not Some licking shit. my face anytime soon. <laughs> right. All right. Well, it's very good. It, it's good that at least not yet. He has not started chewing up your things in the house. So my dogs, 
don't go out of their way to chew things up anymore. They haven't done that since they were like, you know, I don't know, six months old or four right. months old or something like that. But if there is, so like, for example, we've got this old piece of shit couch. It's basically, de it's destined for the dump. It's just there for yeah. now until we can get a truck to get it out of here, right? But it's got some cushions that are kind of ripped up and there's some some uh, stuffing, like the, the, the couch cushion stuffing Right, it's just mm -hmm. kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of there for the taking, <laughs> if that's your thing. Um, but uh, apparently, it's it's our dog's thing, or at least River's thing, my girl dog. Um, <sighs> she likes so, eating the stuffing. So when they, like, they don't let themselves be seen eating stuffing, but but sometimes sometimes we find out that they got into the stuffing, right? Like every once in a while, there'd be some stuffing on the floor, right? Right, right next to the couch. And then of course that came, you know, the dogs got into it, right? Other times there's, there's, um, other ways much later after the fact of eating it, that, that we discover it. I had such, such an opportunity to observe this evidence from river, uh, just a couple of nights ago. I let the dogs out. Whoop, I let whoop, them do their whoop, business. Whoop. And then I usually I'll, you know, like 10 minutes later, I'm like, all right, you know, Simon River, come. And then they run to the door. Well, on this particular occasion, Simon runs to the door and he goes inside and what the fuck? R River, where are you at? River, come on. Nothing. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Well, this is at night. This is like right before bed. This is like their, their last time to use the bathroom before bed. It's like mm -hmm. 11 p.m. or something, right? So I'm like, okay, I gotta find this fucking dog. What the hell is she doing? So I turn on my my flashlight on my cell phone, <clears throat> and I see her on the other side of the yard, in her her poop squat position, right? I'm like, right, oh, yeah. okay, I did bad timing, right? I just I just uh, you know she's pooping. And she's and she, of course she's looking at you like motherfucker <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all right, all right. So I turn off I turn off the flashlight. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll give her a little bit to do her thing, right? So like, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds later, something like that. I was like, okay, that's enough time. Put the put the light back on her. She's still in this position. Like she's just kind of like, you know, in the poop position, just kind of like waddling around the yard. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? She had a dangler, man. This, you know. Yeah. So I go. So I get a little bit closer, right? And I see this like shat. So. She's very dark brown, like almost black, right? Mm. So she's kind of like a shadow in you know, in the in the silhouette that she casts, she's basically a silhouette, right? So I see this like something like hanging out her butt, and I'm like, okay, yeah, and, like she's having a hard time passing something, right? Because every now and then, you know, a dog will, you know, take a little while to get something out, you know, right. a few inches long, whatever, right? No, I get a little bit closer to see what's going on because this, this inordinate amount of time that she was trying to pass this thing. I realize that there's this something coming out of her butt that's about a foot and a half, two feet long. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. She's got this rope dangling from her butthole ah. that's dragging along like, like a snake chasing her ass in slow motion <laughs> <laughs> this dog apparently ate so much couch cushion stuffing it'll happen that <laughs> she's now shitting a rope <laughs> if I hadn't been concerned about her from a medical standpoint this would have been one of the most comical scenes that i've ever encountered in my life oh my gosh that is awesome uh, oh my gosh she finally so good you know happy ending she she eventually passed it she she did a little poop scoot to, to make sure <laughs> And then uh, she was fine after that. But holy <laughs> shit, I've never seen. It's the longest turd I've ever seen in my life. And the best part of the whole thing is the dog has no idea why it happened. Yeah. <laughs> so it went right back and started eating so couch cushion She's going to do it again. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but but uh, way off subject, uh, couch cushion <laughs> stuffing sounds pretty good right now. <laughs> 
Oh my god! You ah, oh, it just, I uh, just, so many ideas flooded through my head. <sighs> oh, um, when do you, when do you give your pup the first shot? So, when do you have to give him his first round? He's already had one round, and we go. I'm going Sunday to take him to his first vet up, uh, up here, and so, it'll be more. Big Boys J in Twitch chat says, sure, when the dog does it, it's cute. When I do it, there's talk of intervention. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. <clears throat> um, speaking of, uh, of, of, of long-term. You can't segue that. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just... yeah, you're just going to have to just jump right into it. Um, <laughs> Subject, open new paragraph. <laughs> what, what, is, what is this American Vandal shit? Oh, okay. So I talked about this last week where my son and I started watching the Netflix series American Vandal. And it's a it's a, a faux documentary series where uh, a high school kid drew some di- or paint, you know, spray painted some dicks on some cars and it's kind of like a murder mystery and they're trying to solve like who actually uh, did the vandalism, right? That was season 1. And it was pretty good. We watched this Season two, we started season two this week. Season two is a whole other level of what the fuck. So the first season was was spray-painted dicks, and the whole season was about dick jokes, right? So how do you top that? Season two is all about poop. It's all poop jokes. The, the premise of this season is that a kid in a different high school poisoned the lemonade in the lunchroom and like something like 80% of the, the school population ate or uh, drank the lemonade during lunch and immediately started pooping themselves. Because they, they poisoned it with a, some sort of a laxative concoction where like without warning, you had to shit right now. Hmm. And people like, of course, you know, everyone ran to the bathroom, but you can only, you know, you've got like four stalls in the bathroom, right? right? But you've got like 40 students trying to get in there. So kids were shitting in the hallways and shitting in trash cans and just shitting straight in their pants. And but but how's the storytelling? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good dude like <laughs> this is probably the best faux documentary series i have ever watched because you can you can pretend that you have no idea that this, these are actors mm-hmm. and entertain your or entertain the idea of this is just a this is a real documentary and you can you can buy that reality mm. like you can like oh shit this is this is for real <laughs> cuz it's pretty believable it's good stuff, dude. And and anyone who hasn't watched this, if you've got Netflix, like I, I recommend each season is only eight episodes. Uh, yeah, check it out, American Vandal. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. What else, man? What? Um, what, what you- so we've had. Do you have Mormons that come knock on your door or like the? I see them. I see them occasionally. Yeah. I haven't had any knock on my door, but I see them. You know the, uh, you know the white button ups, the black pants, the bicycles, mm. uh, running around in pairs. Like I, yeah. yeah, I see them. They're here. Do you like to come knocking on my door? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not not usually. In cold. Alaska, in yeah, the cold? probably oh, yeah. less common in Alaska than it is here in the. Oh, American you'd, you'd be surprised. They, they, it's like it's almost like they treat Alaska like a third world country, and they're all here on their their missions. Well, I mean, you only have 17 residents of Alaska, so I mean, if oh. only two of them are Mormons, you right. still got a very high percentage of the population. Um, they come by, and my my wife and my sister in law are too nice to tell them to go away, so they sit there and let them do their little spiel and everything else, and then they come back, and they're. It, 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 I answered the door today, oh, and no. I <laughs> I can only. Okay, go. go I, I answered the door and I said, "Oh, you, you're the Mormon dudes, right?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, we are." And we like, represent that. the Church of Latter Day Saints. I was like, "That's cool." Um, tell you what, man. Uh, my wife is never gonna go to church. She, she, <laughs> she's not gonna make the time to go to a, try to try a church. She hasn't gone pretty much her entire life. It's not that she's not uh, spiritual. She just, 
she's not going to take the time to do it. My sister-in-law sleeps too much. and She's not going to go. That's, that's a pipe dream for her. She would like to, but she just sleeps too much. And the kids are never going to go because they have Fortnite. And Fortnite is, is more important than God. True. Um, True. I, yeah. And then, uh, then so they, they kind of like looked at me. And I could see, I could see the thoughts in the guy's head. He was like, "Then why don't you go?" Same, so as the same thought yeah. that all of us are so, waiting. So, <laughs> so as his, as the corners of his mouth slowly pursed into what I can only imagine would be his first word, I said, "And me, I'm either Wiccan or or, or atheist, depending on which day you want to talk to me. So there's no chance of you convincing me to go to your church." Okay, and their response. <clears throat> well, they didn't really have one yet. So I told them, uh, we do appreciate you stopping by. You've been coming by every week to try to talk <laughs> us into going to your church. It shows a lot, of, uh, a lot of faith in your spirituality and your religion, and we really do appreciate, and, and, and appreciate that. Um, but it's really not conducive of your time to come back anymore. And they both said thank you and stood in the porch, and I said, okay, have a nice night, gentlemen. And I slowly closed the door, not to be rude. Slowly closed the door, and as I was getting ready to walk down the stairs, I looked back to the front door, and they were still standing there. Still They're standing. trying to save a lost soul. Yeah. You know. So then I just came down here, and uh, that's and started doing bills, and that's when you called me and said, "Hey, we have a show tonight, dumbass." And I was like, "Oh shit, it's Thursday." Oh, th so this just happened? Yeah. Are they still there? I think they, they might be. <laughs> <laughs> like you might want to like give them some Halloween candy or something. Like. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, you that's, have to check that's, on them. This might be a, like a human. That, that's how I should have answered the doors with, with the, the Halloween bowl. Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't. I, I'll have to check the Nest camera and see if they're still there. That's what I was, I was like. I know you have Nest. Like, check your camera, dude. Like, make sure because I know it's like negative 100 degrees out there. Like, you're in Alaska. <laughs> Make sure they're okay. Yeah. Hey, oh, uh, give them some, like, you know, help them make a fire or something if they're just going to camp on your porch. Like, we got, we, we got the fire the fire pit in the backyard with plenty of wood. They can, they can start that up anytime <laughs> they feel like it. They have to dig it out from under the snow first, but, you know. <laughs> oh, dear God, man. I, I tried to be as honest and respectful as possible, but as I was saying it, I was like, man, I am just totally dicking these dudes out. Like, but I, I didn't lie. You know, like I, I did all the things that I expect people to expect from someone being respectful. Yeah. Um, how it came across, I don't know. Cause like I said, they, they might still be there. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Check your cameras. Meanwhile, while you're checking your camera, why don't you go ahead and play this week's movie draft minute? <laughs> I can, uh, I, I, uh, let's see. I might be able to do that. Um, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, did I hey, it? buttons are things uh, yeah, and links are things. Uh, here, let's, let's do this. Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of October 29, 2018. I'm your host, Big Boys J. PSA time. If you're planning to eat your way through the next 60 days, wear loose clothing. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Game Night is in last place, still waiting for their first film. Team Vod Squad's in fifth place with $39.1 million. Team Movie Party's in fourth place with $55.7 million. Team Have a Drink is in third place with $132.3 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in second place, buoyed by Johnny English Strikes Again with $191 million. And in first place with $223.8 million, it's Team Retro Misery. That's your movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of October 31st, 2018. Yo, we are going for the record of the most time spent at number one before you fall to number two. <laughs> Dude, okay, all right, all right. Couple thoughts. I, I said like the over the last couple of episodes that we our days are numbered at number one mm. because this movie's about to come out and it's gonna fuck our shit up. So far, the only movie that has fucked us up in any way whatsoever is Venom, owned by Drunk Kids Gaming, mm. that's pulled in 190000 or uh, uh, $190 million, mm. right? But the combined weight of both of our movies, Night School and A Star Is Born, we're still kicking ass. I was afraid that Bohemian Rhapsody by Game Night, which fits, you're a member of Game Night, I was afraid that Bohemian Rhapsody was going to come in here 
this coming weekend and fuck our worlds. But I have not heard favorable things about this movie. Mm. I don't think it's going to have the legs that we all predicted at the beginning of the season. I think, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to go out here and say, I, I think we're going to sit at number one for a while. Really? You know, I, I, you know, that could be the case about Bohemian Rhapsody, but what you really need to worry about is Green Book. That's going to be the movie that sets, <laughs> you know, cinematography apart. From everything, you know, so you should seven, really worry about that. Seven people are gonna watch that movie. <laughs> it's gonna make it's gonna make thirty two dollars and eight cents. No, me and Will, me and Will were actually talking last night. Like, what if what if Green Book is what wins us the movie draft? Like, everybody <laughs> won't say a fucking thing. You know, it's just ah. like like legit. It makes like it makes like twelve million dollars, and you won by like. Eight million dollars or I, something. Like. I, I I gotta say though, man, we're like we're coming up on. So Bohemian Rhapsody is not getting the big reviews that we thought it was going to. Um, which one was it? Fantastic Beast: The Crimes of Grinwald. That the way Disney is pushing that out. Is it even Disney or is it Warner Brothers? Whatever. It's not the. It's not Disney. Whoever yeah, it is. I, think it's, I think it's Warner Brothers. Is that is that who owns the Harry Potter stuff? I think it's, it's Warner a, Brothers. It's, I don't know. Uh, it's at the Universal theme park, so whatever. Um. <laughs> I, the way that that's been pushing out, that sounds like it might actually have some legs to it. Um, Creed two is Looks still amazing, yeah, it's still a wild card because it's still a sports movie, but then it's got Michael B. Jordan, so it's auto automatically a chick flick because let's face it, he's hot. Um, oh, it's a Michael B. Jordan. Okay, I was like, wait, what? Rocky or or Creed is a chick. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Ha a half naked Michael B. Jordan is going to draw some some. Uh, some feminine eyes. Oh, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. And some dude eyes. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. For sure. uh, uh, well, uh, anyway, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet is our next movie, and I fully expect that to be huge. Oh, oh yeah. Dude, I really do, too. Especially coming out right before Thanksgiving. That's This season's Incredibles, too. I'm going to repeat exactly what I said last week. Yeah. This is our Incredible two, Incredibles, too. Like, it's, it's going to just wreck. Speaking of Incredibles, too, I finally watched It's going to wreck it! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I finally watched the first half of that movie on the airplane, and I couldn't stay awake for the second half, so I didn't even try. Uh, but it was pretty awesome from what I saw. Which movie? Incredibles 2. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was good. It was it was good. Yep. It was really good. Uh, yeah, that's the one good thing about having a baby is, like, I get to watch kids' movies without feeling guilty now. <laughs> you know, so. Like, well, drop that guilt, because who gives a fuck? But yeah. also, that is awesome, because you're going to have, like, so much opportunity to see all the cool cartoons and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Big, 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 big boy J says RIP Rocktober. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's November now. November yeah. 1st. Holy crap. Yep. It's uh, No Shave November. I got a head start. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, me too. But anyway, so, so if you want RMP's November to be successful, head on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Show us that you give a fuck and give us a buck. Uh, we absolutely appreciate the hell out of our patrons. Uh, they help us do things like buy new microphones, buy new mixers, mm -hmm. uh, fly to Austin for South by So Wasted, put on live shows. Uh, every dollar that you give to Ritual Misery goes into Ritual Misery. It does not go into Amos's wallet or my wallet. It goes right back into the show. We appreciate the hell out of you guys. We also want to take the opportunity to appreciate everyone who supports us at twitch.tv slash ritual misery. We go live on there every Thursday, ish. Uh, right about so, ish, 7 so, p.m. So Central. It's, it's, it's every ish Thursday <laughs> at 7 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. ish Pacific time. Correct. That so, is correct. So, uh, but yeah, so support us over there. You can do it for free if you're a an Amazon Prime member. Uh, but if you're like, I don't fuck Twitch, Amazon, uh, I don't understand all the. Just head over to patreoncom slash misery yep. and uh, it's real easy. Pledge a buck, we get a buck a month. It helps more than you can even imagine. Yep. Uh, we love you guys. All right, I believe it is now time for this. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's Game. 
Play with them. Play with them. Play with them. I do indeed have a game, and Jay's bumper has never been more accurate than tonight because I was literally making this game. Well, I was finishing it up as we were supposed to be going live at our scheduled time. <laughs> now, typically you do the game the day of the show after you get off your normal day job and before the show starts during your regularly scheduled post-work poop. Correct. Correct. Okay. And today it just happened that the post-work poop bumped right up against showtime? Uh, I didn't have a post-work poop, so I'm going to have a I'm going to have a post-show poop so... probably. <laughs> so, so you're saying that these uh, these questions might be a little constrained? Perhaps, perhaps. And this this is a uh, maybe, maybe they're not going to quite questions. flow like they normally would. <laughs> there's, so I don't know if these questions are going to drop as often as. So, uh, so you're they saying normally... you're saying they're not as regular as they usually are. These 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 might be a little more um, uh, uh, fluid than yeah. what you would would normally expect from one of these. So uh, so, so the fiber of these questions might be lacking a little. Well, I just hope everything comes out all right, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's... I, 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 th I think we've really cracked the code on this. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> so last yeah, but in the end, you know... Yeah, but yeah, exactly. In the end, it's all about Kent's uh, uh, system. <laughs> this is too good. This is too good. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right here. So, you, so, so <laughs> you're saying you're gonna pinch off the commentary uh, because <laughs> so there's a whole can... there's a whole new loaf of questions ready for us. Yeah. So let's let's flow right in uh, to the stream of questioning that I'm going to present to you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So uh, this week's game is called Scream Kings, mm. where I am going to ask you guys to identify the killer. Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and Michael Myers are the unholy trinity of American of Halloween, of, of like a uh, uh, stalker killer. Uh, slasher movies made famous in the 80s, right? These right. are the three dudes, right? So I'm going to ask you a question about these movies, and then you're going to tell me who it applies to. It's The answer is either Jason, Freddy, or Michael. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, I am. Guess, guess privilege. I'm going to go to Fitz first. So... Fitz, whose movie came out first, Jason, Freddy, or Michael? Ooh, that's a tough one. I, I'm gonna go with uh, Jason. You are gonna say Jason. You would be <laughs> incorrect. The first character to appear on screen would be Michael Myers in oh, Halloween okay. in 1978. Eight. Um, Jason. Uh, so Friday the Thirteenth, I believe, came out in 1981, and then for, and then um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street came out, and I believe 1983. I could be a year or two off from that, but it was definitely the third one to come out. Yeah, somewhere between right, 1984. Amos, yeah, Amos. Moving on to you. Who has the highest hill count? Uh, kill count? Jason, Freddy, or Michael? The highest kill count. This is cine. cine cinematic right this is in their movies yes yes all yes not not video games not novels any of that movie on screen kill count which of these characters and this is out of all of the movies combined whether it's a remake or an alternate timeline if they're in the movie their kill counts wow i would have to say jason Voorhees. you there, say that there are jason 10 Voorhees million Halloween, uh, uh, Halloween movies out there. Wait, so so Jason Voorhees from the Halloween movies? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, Jason Voorhees from the Halloween movies. <laughs> so, so Jason... Well, 
All right, so it's a good thing that we're only asking about the character <laughs> with the highest skill count, because Jason Voorhees, of course, is from the Friday the 13th series. You, But you said that Jason has the highest kill count out yep. of the three characters, and then I will say to you, sir... Jason does, in fact, have the highest kill count, kill count at 121 deaths. Wow. Do you have the, the kill count for all three of them? Uh, see, I, so the, I recorded the the highest one uh, to support the answer. But the so uh, 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 Michael Myers, I think, was right around 80-something. And then Freddy was like, he was like a distant third. He was yeah. like... In, 30s or now, something. now did 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 Freddy's um did Freddy's kill count count the children he burned initially? That's a good question. Yes, that's a good question. Yes. Because oh. because yes. it's the same character. Whether he was alive or dead, he was the same character. Um, yes. So if if they died, uh, in in the canon of the the, of the story. movies, then that the kill count. Because that's like yes. a, that's like a a twenty kid jump start right there, right from the just the. The preamble yeah. so, to the first movie. If you, so if you watch if you watch the the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, like he doesn't kill a lot of people. No. Like he for kills, a slasher he kills like, he, he kills he like six each people. each show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's always like the main six, six but never okay. Nancy. Uh, I just want to say it's a little fucked up. I got a question about shit about before I was born. While well, Amos had to answer Jason's KD ratio, you know, it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. right. Look, so, man, up, this, this so is just Fitz. how the game goes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Fitz, your next question. Who has the most movies? Jason, oh. Freddy, or Michael? Uh, Jason. Yeah, your Jason. Jason has that. the most movies. So, uh, let me ask my old soundboard over here. Is Fitz correct in saying that Jason has more movies than Freddy or Michael? I would you think, are correct. There think, are twelve movies yeah. that feature Jason Voorhees. And how many for? for well, you don't you don't know because you you took down partial data because you were jamming your ass off. It was close though. It was close. So the the Halloween movies, I think. So so Jason was in twelve movies. I think Halloween. I think uh, Michael Myers was in eleven mm. movies, and Freddy's been in nine. It's either eight or nine movies. I, 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 well, I think there's eight nightmare movies plus the one that was crossed over. But there's with also the, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. Yeah. So each of those like added a movie for both yeah. those guys. Okay. Right. But but Halloween or uh, uh, Friday Thirteenth like it comes out. Jason comes out on top yeah. on that. But but just barely. I mean, well, think about it. I mean, there's 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 at least two Friday the Thirteenth a year, almost guaranteed. There's only one Halloween each year. You know. I mean. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, if we're, you know, we're gonna throw calendars in the mix. I guess, uh, I guess Elm Street is not like not even part of the. Yeah, picture. there's not a whole lot of Elm Streets. I, I imagine there's probably fewer Elm Streets post 1983 than there might have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so Amos, moving back to you, whose film debut made the most in the box office? Uh, Jason adjusted for inflation, I'm guessing. Um, no, we're, we're going with, uh, um, raw, raw numbers, real time dollars. I will go with, uh, Freddie. And think... this is, so to clarify though, this is, this is lifetime, right? So, so we talked about, uh, Halloween debuting in 1978 mm -hmm. and there's been like nine movies, I think since then. So it's counting all the box office grosses. It's uh, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me re -clar Let me clarify to myself. Okay. We're talking about film debut. Yeah. So, so Halloween in 1978. How many dollars did it make there? Uh, Friday the Thirteenth debuting in 1981. How many dollars did it make in the box office there in 1981? Right. right? And then you know, and so forth. Right. right. So, um, whose film debut made the most? I'm still gonna stick with Freddy. One because it was later. The dollar cost more. So inflation. Okay. If it's not ad adjusted for inflation, then that's got to be a key thing especially with uh, uh the kind of it has to almost knock the first one out because the inflation matters of the, of the late 70s um so it's really just a matter of of uh the last two and i think freddie was more popular because he uh, especially like once he hit hbo i remember every kid in the fucking school talking about him constantly 
Is, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Freddy. Good answer. Okay. Good answer. Plus, right. plus right, Nightmare, so, Nightmare so, on Elm Street had Johnny Depp. True. So, so, Fre so Freddy Krueger <laughs> debuted in Nightmare on Elm Street in, uh, like I believe, 1983. I should have written that down. Um, <laughs> and that is your answer. You think that, that uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street made more than Halloween or Friday the 13th? Yes. Your answer would be... <laughs> You're off by a couple of million bucks, actually. Michael Myers with Halloween in 1978 made $47 million. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we just watched Halloween last night on Halloween. <laughs> um, we watched uh, Halloween 1, Halloween 2, and then like Halloween 5 or something like that. And uh, man... Halloween one is still one of the greatest horror movies ever made. It's well horror in these like slasher genre. So here's something for you. I've read the book Halloween, but I've never seen the movie. The book what Halloween based on the yeah. Michael Myers mm -hmm. character. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. All of those movies were made into novelizations. Yeah. So it would be kind of interesting because I've never read a slasher film novelization. I'm curious to you know, like how that plays out. It wasn't good. Yeah. Were you not loved as a child? <laughs> like, <laughs> Actually, I, I won the book in a bet. Someone bet me that I would not be able to eat an entire jalapeno. Um, <laughs> All right. And I, I thought it'd be a small jalapeno. It came out to be a really big jalapeno, and I ate the fucker anyway and got my prize, which was the book, and went home and drank about a gallon and a half of, of Fruit Punch Kool Aid. Wow. All, All right. right. Next so question. Amos, unfortunately for you, but perhaps fortunately for Fitz, if he was paying attention and has a decent memory, you gave away the answer to the next question. I'm going to go ahead and read it now to Fitz. This is for you, Fitz. Who was the first character to kill Johnny Depp on screen? Was it Jason? Was it Freddy? Was it Michael? Oh, man. I, I just, uh, Freddy. Just, yeah. You say Freddy was the first on-screen character to kill Johnny Depp, and my soundboard says to you <laughs> that is correct. That for, for, or, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was Johnny Depp's film debut. Yep. It was also the first named character to die in that movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So right now, Amos, and how did he this die? is our final question, and you Kent? have an opportunity to tell Yeah, how did he die, Kent? How did he die? How did, he die? How, how did his he character die? How did he fucking die, Kent? <sighs> Honestly, I haven't I haven't seen a Nightmare on Elm Street since, I don't know, I, I don't know. It's probably been at least half a decade, probably closer to a decade. He uh, died from a nightmare, dumbass. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I said Freddy <laughs> killed him, right? But it, it had to be while he was sleeping. Uh, well, he, he it actually... Wasn't until, he, it wasn't until, like, the sixth movie that Freddy was able to come out of the nightmares right. into the waking world. Um, he, he died from drowning in his dream because he, yeah. he was stuck inside of his waterbed. Made Did he, me, yeah. Made Did me he scared of waterbeds blood? for fucking years. Which right. was creepy when he got sucked into the fucking waterbed and shit. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I had a problem idea. sleeping I, on waterbeds ever since I watched yeah. that movie. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, especially if you sit in the middle and the waterbed like folds up around you. You're like, ah! Yeah, yeah. Oh, Freddy, no! <laughs> yeah. All right, Amos. Uh, uh, this, I'm this sorry, I can't. I just the I had this bully you two. Yeah. This is the final question of the quiz. And okay. Amos, this is your opportunity to tie fits. Right. His current score is two to one. So I'm going to lose. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I thought this one was pretty easy. So... Oh. Which character always targeted children? Was it Jason, was it Freddy, or was it Michael? Depends Depends on how you read that. Like, Which character always targeted children? I'm going to say Freddy. Because he attacked mostly adults, but he attacked them because they were the children of the children he originally attacked and got yeah so i'm gonna so go freddy you're going freddy freddy yep. uh targeted children yes so freddy so freddy in in life fred krueger 
uh, was a child molester slash killer, right? Mm. And um, the angry parents murdered him, and he made a deal with a demon and became this, like, dream demon sleep monster thing. And he always targeted children. So children meaning... So you said he always targeted adults, like adult children. These were... Okay, so I'll give you half credit for, for what you're saying there because these were like grown-up fucking people, adult men and women, playing teenage children. Like, they were playing like 14, 15, 16-year-old kids. Right. The actors were like 27 years old. I, I still think we're saying the same thing. Regardless, game's tied. Yay! Go fit. Yay! Yay! You guys <laughs> go <got Amos>. it. <laughs> you tied two to two. Um... Yeah, so good job. Um, it was an abbreviated game because I was very rushed at getting this one out. You didn't even and, have uh, time to shit, y'all. It was a good game. It was a good game. Yeah, uh, yeah so right. that was Scream Kings. All right, now I have another contest I'd like to pimp. Oh, pimp. Yeah. Oh, do you have a hat and a feather? Uh, and f- no, man. Like, When you got a game, you don't need to be dressed like that. And Halloween's over. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. All um, right, all right. Wh- I posted a couple couple days ago on the Ritual Misery Twitter. Uh, if you listen to our show and enjoy beer, tweet a picture of yourself enjoying your favorite Alaskan brewing beer and tag it hashtag Alaskan Ritual. We'll choose three people at random to receive a 12-pack for New Year's Eve. Oh, that's cool. That is legit. Of course, we won't. We will not send you a 12-pack. We'll send you. We'll PayPal you or or send you the money to buy a 12-pack wherever you are. Yeah, well, uh, like, send you a, 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 one of those gift Visa cards or something. Yeah, exactly. You can get it or something. Um, and you can buy whatever the hell you want round with up. it. Round uh, up. Well, yeah, we'll round up. Yeah. Uh, so that's that, you can buy whatever you want. But we're, we're, we're trying to do that uh, mostly because we're trying to smooge up to the Alaskan Brewing people to become their official unpaid sponsors because they don't pay shit. From, no, podcasting doesn't pay, y'all. There's no money in podcasting. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I mean, um, Tom, unless you're Tom Merritt or um, mm. Roman Mars, <laughs> oh e- e- even even Tom Merritt's got bills to pay. Let me tell you. Yeah, that. sure. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're listening right now and you like Alaskan beers like I do and like Kent does, even though he doesn't have as good access to them as I do, so he's stuck with the founder stuff. Not that they're a bad I- brewery, but they're not our favorite. Um, they might be his favorite. They're not my favorite. And I'm the one that matters. Uh, it's not Ritual Misery's favorite. <laughs> He's trying to backpedal any way he can. Wait, 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 wait. Um, tweet a picture of you drinking your favorite, uh, your favorite Alaskan brewing beer, and uh, hashtag Alaskan Ritual, and your name will be added to the pot. And if you retweet that original tweet, that'll it's enter you a second time. Yeah. So you get double entries. And that's hashtag Alaskan Ritual, yep. right? Yep. Alaskan it's, ritual. Hashtag Alaskan ritual. Or you can just go to twitter.com slash ritual misery and it's pinned right there at the top. So yes, do that guys. Like we we want to buy you beer. Like, yeah. Let us let us buy you a, a, a twelve pack for freaking New Year's, man. Yeah. And I was easy. hoping it was like a twelve pack with two beers missing that you just sent them, you know. <laughs> uh, that's that's that actually yeah, that might that, uh, yeah, that might be a good idea actually. It depends on how how expensive Alaskan beer is <laughs> where you are. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. No, but seriously, like this is this is the easiest thing in the world to yeah. get. Yeah. And and thus far, I don't think I mean let me let me check here. Uh, I don't think many people have actually tagged it. There's a. Uh, it's very few. Uh, B. There's, you know, there's one. You will go to the top of the list if you if you tweet with that hashtag and retweet one. Yeah, yeah. Like you're automatically uh, uh, Christopher so Christopher Walker from uh, from uh, the Have a Drink Show actually used that. Uh, he auto tweeted it from his um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Fucking what's that app? Untapped. Untapped. He went, he went into yeah. Untapped, wrote in there, put the hashtag in there. That counts. Next. That counts. Very cool. So, all right. So some other stuff that we've got coming up on the horizon, guys. Uh, it's November first. We're in November already. Yeah. That means that we're almost done with 2018. We're about to roll into 2019, which means that we are going to have a New Year's Eve streamathon very, very soon. All it's too a soon. Seven hour. It is a 27-hour stream. Holy 
cow, how do we do it? Uh, somehow we do it every year. We raise money for kids. It's a good time. You guys, if you want to be a part of this amazing event that we put on every year, yep. we raise money for kids. We entertain the hell out of people. Diamond Club comes out in droves. Like Chat Realm and is active as hell. And it's not just us idiots on there for 27 hours straight. We did that the first year, 24 hours straight of me. Uh, <laughs> we decided that was not a good idea, and it was very um, it, it, that made people happy. So it's now 27 yeah. hours of a whole bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. So we started bringing in other Diamond Club talent. We had so the second year we had l the likes of Brian Brushwood. Uh, Justin Robert Young showed up. We had the debut of the Diamond Club movie party. Mm -hmm. We had like uh, you know talent coming out of the woodwork. The Christy third Kate we had came even on more... to do her first live music show. Yes, yeah, that was yes, amazing. Yes, we had even more talent come out the third year. Like we had the the stream the live stream debut of Have a Drink Show. The aforementioned Have a Drink Show. Fitz I think did his first appearance on the New Year's Eve streamathon that year. Um, like it goes on and on and on and on. It's for 27 hours straight. If you would like to be a part of this amazing event that we do, go over to bit.ly slash streamathon 2018 sign up. Sign up. So it, that's streamathon, all in words, S T R E A M A T H O N 2018 S I G N U P. That's B. Uh, bit.ly slash streamathon2018 sign up head over there become a part of it if you're like oh i'm not a streamer but i would love to be able to help out get over there and sign up because you don't have to be a streamer you can help us out with back end stuff you, if you're good at tech support we need you yep. if you're like ah oh, i could do some drawings and stuff we need graphic designers get over there and do that uh, uh, big voice j just said it was his first foray into streaming as well and he's a voiceover artist so oh. like and, and, Jay, and his show was amazing. Like his show was probably my favorite show yeah. of last year. Dude, um, yes. he just that was it was just stupid good. Like it was yep. so entertaining, and so funny, and it wasn't. I couldn't classify it as anything. It was just I had it on, and I was sick, and I've I've been sick two New Year's in a row now, one because of surgery and one because of of uh, medication. Yeah, yeah. No, Jay is Jay is awesome. You guys have heard his voice a couple of times tonight. Tonight, yeah. Uh, listen to an hour of Jay. Yeah, you, it's absolutely mesmerizing. Yep. Like Jay is just the best radio DJ voice host guy. Like yep. it, he is so entertaining. It's awesome. I'm pretty sure Jay is going to be a part of this year's event, and I hope so. Um, uh, Jay hey, hey, needs hey. to head over to hey, hey, <laughs> pit hey, 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 slash <laughs> stream twenty eighteen sign up. Uh, um, no, but it's it's so it's so much fun. It's so awesome. We're gonna have more details about that. Uh, coming up in the next several episodes, uh, news people, you know, great, great acts that are, that are signing yeah. up. Uh, and, and finally, because you, uh, the end of the podcast cannot go without enough calls to action, uh, because that's what these are. And you're only supposed to have one per show according to experts, but that's why we buck the trends yeah, because but it. we're going to do what we want. Um, hit the show notes. There's a link in here for a poll. Uh, just go tell us what you think about the show. We're ramping up for our 200th episode. That's all I'm going to say about that is uh, hit the show notes because it's right no, there. I got to I gotta say it out loud, though. It's YOLO420.com slash RMP200. Well, see, I was trying to avoid that, but you just said you know YOLO420.com YOLO slash RMP200. Yeah, and it's like the, the digits, 200. Zero, zero. So yeah. it's yellow420.com slash RMP200. Why would you? That's just so much, though. Like, why would you Why would you do that? Why would you say yellow420.com slash RMP200? I don't know. Fit, it's, I don't know. Fit, we haven't heard from Fitz in a, in a couple of minutes. Like, Fitz, well, have, have, you I, been over, have you been over to yellow420.com slash uh, RMP200? No, but I really should go check out yellow420.com slash rmp Two hundred, yeah. I, like you I really should because it only takes it, like it really takes less than a minute. It takes like thirty seconds to do this poll. There's like there's like a few questions on there, like you know, hey, what do you think about this? What what's your favorite of that? You you check the boxes, you click the radio buttons, yep. and you hit submit. Like it's it's real quick. Um, but yeah, head All over right. there, yellow420.com slash rmp200. We do have our two hundredth episode coming up. This is episode one hundred and ninety two. We're only epi eight episodes away. Yep. It's going to be a big deal. We have, we've been doing this show for over four years. Lots of cool, amazing stuff has happened. 
We want your opinion on those things. And we're going to use your answers to, number one, help us make the future of the show better so that we give you more of the things that you like, the more of the things that you want to see again. And it's going to help us put together a best of RMP video, something that we can display on our 200 episode. Yep. Um, it's going to be awesome. Uh, head over there and uh, and take that poll. Joe420.com slash RMP200. All Amos, right. what hey, have we got, bro? Uh, uh, Fitz, where can people find more of you, man? You're doing all kinds of shit online, too. Uh, Twitch.tv slash FitzShip29 uh, or at FitzShip29 on Twitter. You can find all my links there. Awesome. Awesome. And what will people find there other than you playing video games and yelling at your controller? I, me ranting about stupid shit that doesn't matter to anybody, but it's just I'm bored. So. <laughs> I, I, my yeah. favorite thing, Fitz, is when you stream a horror video game like, like Resident Evil 7. And you legit yeah. lose your fucking shit when you get scared. Yeah, I scream like a little girl, but I wasn't going to mention that. Um, <laughs> Thanks for calling them out, dude. Yeah, uh, but no, I've, I've been Twitch, doing a lot of that uh, lately, Twitch. screaming like a Twitch. girl. TV slash Fitzchiv29. What about on uh, social media? You you got a presence there, bro? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. Like I said, at Fitzchiv29. I'm on at Fitzchiv29 on every platform and Gmail, all that shit, so... You know, if you want to just cuss me out in an email, you feel free. Uh, I have yeah. nothing else to read. Right on. I, don't know if I you am, can hear the I baby. Am, <laughs> I am un, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I'm either Del Noche or Del Noche. So I'm everywhere else that you want to find me on social media. Uh, Amos, what about you, bro? At Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E, find out all the cool stuff I'm getting into, which is just increasing more and more as we go. Uh, we didn't talk about it tonight on how much audition I've been doing, but it's um, I'm really starting to learn, learn the program like nobody's business. So it's it's a lot of fun, and it's uh, all uh, being being caught over there at Twitter, E T H A N C A I N E. Of course, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. We keep that one easy for you at least, and submit ideas on our subreddit R M uh, Ritual Misery Reddit com. And I'm going to hit this little button right here so we can kind of slowly fade out. Um, we want to give a very special thanks to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. We are live every Thursday-ish at 7 p.m.-ish Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash Ritual Misery. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, for Fitz, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> oh, what the hell? That's awesome. Uh, I like that. That's awesome. Thank you, Flavor Toothpaste.